Welcome to the lesson for the D major section of my volume two method book. Uh, there's a link for the book underneath the video, but uh, feel free to watch the video for free and gain some of the tips. So each section of the book is going through a different key and this is D major, so that's two sharps. Now D major could be played in first position or second position, but because there's no notes on the first fret, because the Fs are sharped and Cs are sharped, we're gonna play the whole um, D major in second position during the scales. So we're gonna be going over those scales and some arpeggios and chords, and then um, over a duet and a solo piece. So the first scale, we're gonna play in second position, meaning our first finger will be at the second fret. And we'll be playing on these frets with these fingers. So just remember to keep your thumb behind your second finger. So in this case, your thumb should be somewhere behind the third fret. It could be a little bit of leeway on either side, but in general, that's the basic principle, right? When we bring our hand together. Don't let your thumb lag behind and play up here like this. It's just normal playing style with that perfect hand position, but starting at the second fret. So the one octave D major scale. practice it with all the different fingering combinations, rest stroke, free stroke, but um, getting practice just playing that. If you want to practice it in first position as well, go for it. But you're probably pretty used to playing in first position already, so I'd recommend you start getting used to position playing, which will be used a lot in more advanced um, pieces. So the D major position scale goes to the highest note in the position, then to the lowest note, and then back to the tonic, which is D in this case. This is really useful for reading purposes. Um, playing within a key, when you read a piece of music, you don't just go from one D to the next, you use all the notes in that area of the guitar. So getting used to that is important. <laughs> be able to go through that with with no doubt as to uh, the position playing or what finger to use or anything like that just very secure hand position you just play through it so a one octave D major arpeggio we're gonna do a repeated thumb for this one remember arpeggio is just a broken up chord so the chord shape would be this F sharp A and D but we're gonna play the notes individually right so there's gonna be D F sharp A D, A, F sharp, D. It's important to learn these things just like pian pianists um, learn it and violin players and everyone else. Um, these triads are broken up with a rest in between because of the, um, I didn't want to use bar shapes in this particular book because it's more on the beginner level side. So after each chord, just take a small break and readjust your fingering. So second position D major triad. First position, or first inversion. Back to second inversion. Don't worry about the music theory behind it. Um, just get some practice recognizing D chords. So this is a D chord with an A in the bass, second inversion. A D major chord with an F sharp in the bass, or first inversion and then back. It's hard to do a first in, um, a root um, position triad because we'd have to put our fourth finger up here and I'm just avoiding that for this particular book. So now a chord progression in D major. Um, really important to be able to strum chords in different keys. So this book has just been going through that and I've talked a lot about why classical guitarists should learn chord shapes, but essentially we wanna be able to recognize the chord shapes in our pieces and uh, to help with memory function and all sorts of different reasons and analysis. Um, but also we just should be able to play chords just like every other type of guitarist. It's also great for your finger dexterity as well, right? Um, just think of it as a finger exercise if you don't like chords. D major or one, G or the four chord, back to D, one, A, five chord, 
D. Again, don't worry about the music theory behind it, just get some practice playing for now, and then in later books um, and exercises we'll be talking more about the music theory. So this um, duet by Couperin uh, was originally for keyboard. If you have a friend or a teacher, um, you can play it as a duet and you'll be playing the top part. Um, if you're playing it on your own, um, just play the top part as if it was the, a beautiful melody, which, which it is. Um, so just gives you some practice playing in D major um, on a nice single line melody. The first half of this piece uses only um, first position. So we'll be playing in D major with C sharps and F sharps, but in first position on the guitar. The second half of the piece switches to second position. This happens all the time in repertoire, so it's, this is an opportunity for you to get used to it with a simple piece. You can practice that. Now, um, when you shift to second position, again, remember, you want to move your whole hand up. So the arm just moves the whole hand up. Don't let the thumb lag behind like this. Make sure the thumb is moving with the hand. That way there's no difference between playing in this position or this position. Um, and then it's just one finger per fret. So if you've practiced your scale enough, it should be pretty straightforward to do. Now, La Volta. This is a Renaissance uh, lute work, and I've edited it a little bit just to put the basses on open strings, but it's pretty much exactly as the original with a few adjustments. Um, beautiful little piece. There's lots of different versions of the Volta, so um, if you look it up on YouTube or something, you might find tons of different versions of it by different composers, some anonymous, some not. Um, just realize that um, there's many versions of, of the Volta. So we're in second position. All the bass notes are open strings. repeats of each section just like the music notates there. Um, one thing you might want to try first is just playing the melody on its own. With no bass notes, just to get really comfortable with that melody. That high B, by the way, is with your fourth finger at the seventh fret. It'll just take a moment of, of a shift. And then you're back to second position. I didn't even mark it in because uh, the, the position change because it's just for one split second. So for a split second you'll be in fourth position. So you can just move your hand up there. But it's really just like a hop up and then return. You have to get used to these little things in classical guitar. Sometimes we hop around the neck quite a bit. But second position, hop up, hop back down. And just try to maintain your hand position when you do that hop. You just have to move it up and then hop back down and not get confused or discombobulated, right? Then you, once you have the melody the way you like it, with a nice strong pulse and everything, start throwing in those bass notes, but let that melody remain legato and nice and your rhythm remain nice and steady. Um, but like I said, practice it separately at first if you like. Um, we're using I am just for the top voice and thumb for the bottom, so um, it should be pretty straightforward to accomplish, but take it slow and give it some time so you get used to the position changes, right? The next key we'll be going over is A major, so that'll be the next video.